welcome back to my channel. It is the Saturday before Halloween and we are doing some spooky pony things today. We're unboxing Joda, who I think looks like a spooky pony. Um, we are going to be decorating this shelf back here with my Halloween models after I introduce them to you all. And then we are going to be making a Halloween halter for Joda because the horse is white and black and I think an orange halt holiday halter would look fantastic um so the lighting is a little weird today but it's kind of given like that uh foggy halloweenish glow so we're just we're just gonna leave it we're just gonna let it go um so first things first because we have to fit joda up here too we are going to unbox him so he claims this is the collector club model for the fall of this year and if you haven't already be sure to sign up for the collect uh deluxe collector club next year or just a collector club. You do have two options. You can either do deluxe or you can do regular. Um, whichever one you decide, you will be able to purchase the models that they are offering. So that's exciting. The only thing with the deluxe collector club is at the end, you receive the pin and the stable mate like I showed you um, in the last video. So that's probably one of the, like, the major differences in that video. Okay, here we go. Joda, going to be free here shortly. I think it's Joda. I don't know. That's how I'm pronouncing it. Again, because the names they come up with and my way of pronouncing names is just weird. Like, I don't know if I pronounced it right, but if I did it, don't judge. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so Jada is in this bubble wrap. Now, some of these I have seen have come out really awful looking. People have complaints, the way they're painted, um, the way they have specs under the gloss, everything. So I'm really hoping that we hopefully, maybe, possibly got a good one, but I don't know. Um, so we're just unbox so as of right now i don't really see anything that's like too major i don't see any black spot specs or anything under the paint but someone is right like it does look like the white may have just been hand painted on um you know i i don't know if that's accurate or not but that is what it looks like but the black the black looks nice so far so i don't know if you guys got this model what did you get like what were your thoughts on it did you get something good are you going to keep them you're going to sell them what are you going to do with them Mine, I'm going to keep because I need to put it in my Halloween display because it looks like a Halloween horse. And my husband and I actually just got done watching the Michael Myers Halloween. So I think because this horse is so creepy looking, maybe his name will be Michael Myers. He looks like he's wearing a mask like he does in the movie. So, and look at the lighting. It's throwing some like weird, like foggish glow. That is so odd. I don't know if it's because it's just hot and we have cold air going on in the house. But I'm leaving fingerprints, so I don't know. <laughs> That's not a good thing, is it? <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, what's going on with this, this light today, but it's not as clear as it normally is. So I do apologize. But this is Joda. So any of you that got her, got him, didn't get him, this is what he looks like. And what's interesting about this guy is that he looks pretty identical to the little stable mate I got, Verky. I mean, because if you look, they both have the weird black-eyed thing going on. And then the way they're painted, it's like almost like really similar. So this one might just be like another Halloween horse maybe that I'll put in the collection. But how weird is that? Like, Briar, was that intentional? I don't know. If it was, cool. If not, well, <laughs> they look alike anyways. All right. So they will go up on the shelf as well as the following. Hang on, I've got to move everybody around. i got like so much stuff going on here. Okay, so... The first one I have is Mini Bats in the Belfry. So we're going over my Halloween horses now. And then I've got the big Bats in the Belfry. So got Mommy and Baby, or Daddy and Son. <laughs> and then I've got, I've got this little girl, this little guy, I think it's Calav Calavara or something like that. Um, I do want to try to find the bigger one because I do have the baby, so now I need a bigger one. Um, and then my first Halloween horse ever was Nightmare. So this is on the Gopher 365 mold. And it's just got some like um, demons and stuff painted on it. Some nightmarish stuff, got some bats. And on the belly, it actually says Nightmare 2014. So that tells you like when this model came out. Um, it does glow in the dark, but since I've had him so, for so long, I don't know if he still does. So we, I guess we just kind of have to test that out. So I don't know. All right. And then the next one I ended up getting was Twilight Terror. Um, Twilight Terror does have like a Twilight Tower on her and lightning and a horse and a moon and the trees. Very pretty. Um, however, with Twilight Terror, she, he, 
he does make um like storm noises and stuff but because also i've had him for so long the storm noises no longer work but there is a place on the bottom to see if i can put some new batteries in so we'll see if i can replace the batteries but that's another halloween horse all right and then my next one was apparition so you guys are probably familiar with this one this one came out fairly recently a couple years ago so it's got like the eyeballs on it um also glows in the dark very purpley very white as well and then i also got the next year i got maelstrom so maelstrom looks like this looks like this and maelstrom has like looks like pirates of some sort on him and ghosts and stuff so that's pretty cool oh and there's even a pirate ship like on this side i am so sorry about the lighting i don't know what is going on but it is not it's just i guess it's just that spooky glow that spooky time of year but that is what maelstrom looks like and then my newest recent one you guys went with me to equus now to get and that was specter um specter is actually probably my favorite out of all of them and specter like glows super super well so i was happy to see that so okay that's all the Halloween horses I have. I don't have very many only because I just recently like started to collect them year after year. Um, so there are some that I'm missing. I don't know if I'll be able to get them. But if not, we have a good selection and hopefully they'll all fit on the shelf. But as I was cleaning the shelf and I went ahead and put like the lights and stuff up because it was a little tricky to get it up there. And I think like doing it with the video would have been even trickier. So I went ahead and got that set up. Uh, the two little canisters up there are from Hocus Pocus, my all time favorite Halloween movie. So I can tell I can show you those a little bit closer when we get up to the shelf. Um, so they have lights in them as well. So what I did was I bought some spider webbing and I put that on the shelf. And then I put like a table, they call it like a Halloween table cover kind of thing over that to put it over the, um, the little twinkle lights that I got. And then I put the bottles up there as well. So we're going to try to fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven horses on that shelf. I don't know if we can do it. If we do, good luck to us. If we don't, well then we just aren't going to have seven horses on the shelf. So we will pick our favorites at that point, but that is kind of hard because they're all my favorites. As you guys know, when you have model horses, you can't just have one favorite. You got to have multiple favorites. So, okay, I'm going to grab my camera. So I have to use my phone because I haven't really explored the other cameras I have yet to get like a really good filming camera. So I'm going to take you guys off the ring light. We're going to go up to the shelf. Um, and we're going to, we're going to grab horses as we go and we're going to see if we can get them placed up there. So here we go. Okay, so here's a layout of the horses on the bed. So we'll be picking them from these selections here. Of course, those are the ones I just showed you. So um, we'll probably pick like the tallest ones first to go in the back. So that's gonna be Maelstrom. So we are gonna go ahead, lift him up to the shelf. We're just gonna place him there. So here's the first Hocus Pocus bottle I got. It says Dead Man's Toe because that was part of the potion they made when they were trying to suck the lives out of their victims. And then the other one, it just says special potion. I don't really know what that one was supposed to be. I don't know if it's just like the special potion of like what was in the movie. Not real sure, but that is what those look like. And there is Maelstrom. All right. So let's get, let's get Nightmare next. I think Nightmare would be a good one to put up there. So close up. All right. So Nightmare. Do, do, do. We're going to put her, him her him or her I can't remember what it is right there um okay so there's those two so there's two of the horses so let's try um who should we put up there next maybe maybe we'll try Twilight Terror maybe we'll put that one up there next should be a pretty good fit I hope all right so we may have to move some stuff around because I want Twilight Terror kind of back there in between Maelstrom and Nightmare. So we'll just kind of place him in there. Okay, so here's what we have so far. All right, let's see. Twilight Terror or Nightmare is actually kind of, it's a little, little bigger. So I don't know. Let's see, if I scoot that potion bottle over, I don't want to knock it off because we all know that, that would be bad luck. But maybe if we move Twilight Terror over, and then we kind of kind of do that. Does that look okay? You guys like that? Maybe I can move Maelstrom over as well because he is kind of right on top of Twilight Terror. So this is me just like, you know, trying to organize all this. And it is very, for me, it is hard because I don't have much room. 
All right, next, let's grab, let's get Bats in the Belfry, why not? All right, so Bats in the Belfry can sit there in front of Maelstrom. Actually, that one can rear as well, so maybe, no, I don't like that. Okay, maybe we'll put Bats in the Belfry over here in front of Twilight Terror. Hmm. Or maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe back in front of Maelstrom. There's that. Okay. All right. Let's grab. We're going to grab. Oh, this guy next. Spectre. We'll grab Spectre next. So Spectre is just kind of like perfect. Fits right there. And then we're going to get Apparition. And hopefully Apparition will fit as well. Um, yeah. So Apparition can kind of stand right there, I guess. Alright. So we have we have we at least have the six Halloween horses up there, so that's that's a plus. Okay, and then we'll grab the miniature versions and we'll place them. So we got miniature bats in the belfry, and then we have miniature Calivar or whatever that one's name is right there. Okay. I think that I think that's going to have to work for now because Joda is not going to be able to fit because we ended up just putting the actual Halloween horses up there or Michael Myers, as I should call that horse probably because of how creepy he looks. Okay, so there is that. So then our next thing will be to turn off the lights and see how it looks, see if we did a good job. Okay, so it's just a like a little overview of what this looks like in the dark. So it, it looks okay. I think it'll work for this Halloween. Maybe next year we can figure out something a little more fancy, but this is what we have. So I hope you guys enjoyed building this shelf with me. And now we have to go and build our halter for Joda. So we will do that. And then we will go from there. Um, the video at that point will be at the end. So that'll be like the Halloween, um, the Halloween, uh, horse video model horse video that I wanted to do for you so all right I'll see you here in a few minutes okay now that we have unboxed Joda or Michael Myers as we are now calling him and we have built our Halloween display the next thing is to build the Halloween halter and um I've got some supplies here we're gonna do orange holiday ribbon we're going to do these little um cheek pieces we're going to use some buckles, I'm going to use a D-ring, and I'm going to use some of the O-rings as well. So, we are going to start off by cutting some of the ribbon first. Um, I do have, like, small jewelry scissors. I've got jewelry, like, tweezers that I use as well. So, all these are, like, the perfect size when you're going through and you're making your halters because, believe it or not, you're actually going to use, like, every one of these um tools in this process so if you have not made halters before or if you're still learning how to do it um you will be using these so and i've got some tweezers because sometimes like if you're pulling the ribbon through like the cheek pieces or the buckle or something like that it gets a little bit stuck especially the holiday halter ribbon it's an eighth inch which is what you need when you're making these halters and if you get on Rio Rondo, you can actually buy these supplies like for this size of ribbon. But I found that this is just slightly thicker because it's got like the sparkles around the edge. So it tends to get stuck a little bit more, but we are going to go ahead and use it because it is my favorite. I have made Christmas halters out of this. I have made some light blue ones, which you probably saw on my Instagram channel. Um, I've made a couple other colors as well. I just like, I love this ribbon. Um, most people use the one that's rigid and I do have that. I do use that as well because that does probably look more realistic. But if you're going for like a holiday look, like it's Halloween or it's Christmas or just like springs around the corner or Valentine's Day, um, I prefer to go with this. Now this is very hard to find. I do find mine at Walmart, but they don't always have all the colors and this is the only orange that I've ever been able to find. So I was very lucky to find it to be able to make the halter for this guy tonight. So, oh, and you also, like, I always use a hot glue gun. That's one thing I learned from other tack makers is they do use the hot glue guns um, because it's nicer of a glue to use to stick your ribbons together. 
and I've just got to wait for it to heat up a little bit more here. So while that's finishing heating up, we'll go ahead and cut some ribbon. Um, I typically cut like a little longer than what I think I might need just because it, um, if you don't cut it as long as you need, you end up recutting your pieces. So you just want to make sure that you get exactly the size that you need. Even if it's a little long, you can always trim it down. That's something I always do. I'm always trimming it down just because like, I don't know, I just get it too long. And I always cut the ribbon at an angle. So with that being said, we've got our ribbon cut. So now we need to cut out the cheek pieces. That's where you're gonna use like these wire look, wire cutting looking ones. Um, I also use these to pop my ponies out of their briar boxes as well. Um, it's just easier when cutting wire. I've tried scissors, but I find when I use scissors, I end up some in way, some way, shape or form scratching my model as I'm cutting them out of the box. So the wire cutters are just a little bit nicer because they get, um, don't allow for that to happen or I haven't had it happen. And sometimes when you cut your pieces, they're gonna fling across your table or wherever you're sitting. Um, in this instance, I am sitting at a table in our kitchen. So as you notice, there is no horses behind me, but we do have like my horse wine holder and my horse wine bottles because anytime I see a bottle of wine with horse, I'm like, oh, I have to try that wine, see what it tastes like. And it's always good. So. I'm building up a collection. I'm gonna put some like lights in it, but that's besides the fact that's not part of this video, but I just thought I would share. So anyways, okay, back to this. So I'm just going to take cheek piece and I'm going to stick the ribbon through it. Um, I do use the three slotted cheek piece. It's just easier to do it that way. Um, I know there's different cheek pieces you can choose from, but this one just happens to be my favorite. So. I'm gonna stick it through, I'm gonna trim it a little bit, and then I'm going to go ahead and just put the glue on. And I always try to make sure the glue, the glue is like thick enough, but yet light enough to hold the cheek piece because if it's not thick enough, um, the cheek piece or your pieces of your halter will fall apart. If any of you, anybody else makes tack, which I think a lot of you do, um, you'll, you probably know what I mean. And I don't, with my tack, I honestly, I do not sell it right now because there's other tack makers out there that make wonderful tack and I don't really wanna, um, I don't really wanna do that right now. But if you're interested in getting a holiday halter, you know, just DM me on my Instagram and I can certainly make you one, that's no problem. But to do it as a full-time business, I also work full-time, I have a full-time job. So it kind of takes away from my model horses at times, which, you know, that's kind of sad because I really love making the videos and the horse tack, but you know, Sometimes life has to come first, unfortunately. And for me, in this case, it does. Maybe one day, like if YouTube is, ends up being like what I do down the road, then of course I'll have more time, but okay. Back to this, so I got the first three slotted ring on. I'm going to just measure it right up against the jawbone. I'm gonna stretch the ribbon over the nose to get my measure, measurement for the next piece. And again, I'm gonna cut the piece just slightly longer than what I need so that I can get a good measurement so that way I am not um, going too short at this point because if I went too short, I would have to disattach the piece of ribbon from the other uh, three slotted ring that I already have done on this other side. And I don't really wanna do that. And then sometimes see like this ribbon, like it likes to fold. So I have to just kinda move it around until it stops folding on me. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to, again, take the measurement. Um, this one's a little bit longer still. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the ribbon through to make it a little shorter. Measure it back to my pony's nose. Um, it's on the jawline, right where I need it to be. And then I'm going to, again, we're gonna trim it and then we're just going to glue it down. And I don't know about you guys, but I burn my fingers so much when I do this because sometimes the glue gun, like it, Produce, produces a bigger glob than what I want. So <laughs> I end up burning my fingers, but this is the um, the first piece of the halter. And then you can see the rings are on the side. So then next what we do is we just basically the same thing. I'm gonna kind of turn it inside out. I'm gonna put the other, I'm gonna put the ribbon in through the other side. So you wanna do, do it into the rings that are opposite each other because if you do one on the side and one on the bottom then you know that doesn't turn out and you just have to do it again so i don't want to do it again because in my opinion this takes long enough to begin with so the quicker and easier you can make things the better and i'm literally gonna try to not 
burn my finger, but yeah, glue, get the glue on here. There we go. So we got some glue there. We got glue on that one. All right. And then I'm just going to put it up on my pony's nose and we're going to take, and we're going to measure it around. And again, I'm going to cut it a little longer just so that way I have enough ribbon to work with. So if I did get it too long, all I have to do is trim it when I go to glue it. So we're gonna go ahead and stick. We're gonna go ahead and stick that piece of ribbon through the ring piece there. All right, so then I'm just gonna put it back on. Make sure we got the right size going on here. Looks like we do. So then I will just, again, the ribbon has folded on me, so I have to try to See, that's the only thing with this holiday ribbon is it's really bad about folding because of how it fits through the um, slots on your tack making pieces here. So I feel like I'm always constantly unfolding it. So then we're just gonna drop some glue on it. Maybe, okay, so, oh, there we go, okay. I just didn't have enough glue coming out, that's all. Okay, and then sometimes too, like this glue, because it is hot glue, again, it's gonna string on you. And that's when, and then too, sometimes the burns happen because it is stringing on me. Okay. Oh, crap. So I literally just glued a piece of this backwards. So see, that's why it's, important to get this done correct the first time because now I have to undo this because I accidentally glued the wrong side of the ribbon down. Oh, shoot. Okay, so I got it. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to put this on here. Okay, so this piece we are going to glue back down. This part of the video is going to be so much longer than the rest of it just because I'm making this tack. So, okay, so I got that. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to trim this piece a little bit and re-glue this because, yeah, that didn't work in our favor because what I did was I accidentally glued the wrong side of the ribbon down, so that did not, that did not help. Okay, do that. Okay. And I'm just going to re-glue. Man, I don't know if you, can you guys hear that? It is like noisy outside tonight. So I'm trying to do this and, you know, I don't know what's going on out there, but the cops are going crazy. Okay. All right. So now we got a nose piece and I made it inside out. So that way I could make sure that I got all the measurements right. All right. So we're going to go ahead and fit the fit that on. So there is a nice little nose piece. And again, it's not, it's not as close to the nose as, or to the jawline as I would like. So I'm just going to kind of push, push back there like that. Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. Okay. So next step is to make the side cheek pieces here. So we are going to just Put this through here. All right. And I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do this one inside out. Only because it makes it a little easier just to do it like this. To do it the correct way. That way you don't miss glue it like I just did. Okay, so I got that piece on there now. 
All right, so then we're just going to measure it. And I usually measure to like right in front of, oh, you guys can't see that, I'm sorry. Um, darn it, my pony is stuck. Okay, so then I typically just try and kind of measure it like in between like that, where the eye and the ear are to kind of get the measurement for the cheek piece there. So you're going to go ahead and do that. Again, we're going to cut it a little longer. And now we're going to use the O-rings. We're going to open that up. And we're going to pull. I use three of these, so we're going to pull them out. And they're going to be stuck together when you get them, when you pull them out. So you'll just have to make sure you pull them apart. And like I said earlier, I got all my, like the accessories part of the halter. It all came from Rio Rondo. So that is where I buy all of my tack making supplies, minus the ribbon, which I buy at Walmart or Julian Fabrics. Um, now I've seen online where people do buy ribbon from other places, so I might kind of look into other places to get it too. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fit that on. And then we're gonna put the O-ring right about right there. I'm gonna turn this pony towards me so that way I can see it better. Okay, so I'm gonna shrink the O-ring a little bit because, or pull it in a little tighter because it's a little, it's not as short as I would like. So, okay, I've got that on there. And then I'm just gonna take, cut the ribbon. All right, and then we're just going to glue that down. All right, so we're gonna glue it down. There we go. We have a cheek piece, and then we have the nose band, the cheek piece, or nose band, and cheek piece. So then I'm going to do the same, same for this side. Again, I'm gonna cut the ribbon at an angle because it's easier to get through, through the, um, accessories here the three slotted ring so I'm just going to pull it through all right okay so yeah we're okay I'm gonna pull it through I'm gonna trim it down oops I almost cut that one down and then we are going to just I'm gonna take and I'm going to glue it now that it's cut and perfect okay so then you have to put on so there's the other one and I'm just gonna attach the ribbon spool still still so I'm going to to get the measurement on how far the other o-ring should go I'm just gonna squish together the halter the cheek pieces and then these two side pieces real quick and I'm going to fold the ribbon right where I'm going to attach the other o-ring then that way I've got a perfect spot to put it and it's folded and it should be even with the other one once I get it on here so I'm going to cut my ribbon and I'm going to go ahead and place this one I'm trying to make this to where you guys can see what I'm doing um the way I have things set up, it's a little, <laughs> looks like it's a little hard for you maybe to see, but I don't know. I'll have to go back and watch the video footage and it'll tell me. Okay. All right. So, yep, we folded it. We got it perfect. So now all we have to do, all we have to do is trim and glue it down. And now we have a halter with two cheek pieces on it. All right, so then the next thing I do is I go ahead and I measure it back to my pony's face. Because the next step for me is to put the buckle on. So the buckle is gonna go, if I can get this, okay. So the buckle's gonna go, I always put it on what would be his left side. So it's actually gonna go right here. So we need to make sure that we cut some ribbon for that. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna cut the ribbon. All right. Well, actually we're gonna stick it through the O-ring. So this is another O-ring process. 
Um, O-rings to me are the easiest piece of the halter to use because they are the biggest and the easiest to get your ribbon through. So we're gonna put it through, we're gonna trim it, we're gonna glue it. All right, we're gonna glue it down. Okay, and then what we have to do is we have to put it, we have to put it back on our pony. So we'll put it back on the pony. back on the pony and then I kind of like just like bring it up a little bit so where like I can see about where a measurement would be of where I want to put the buckle um I usually do it kind of right by the ear because if I remember correctly with like real horse halters the buckle is more by the ear so that's where we're actually going to put that one and this one I do tend to go ahead and cut super long um not like super super long but longer than the rest when I'm making it because this is where it gets tricky it gets tricky with the buckle trying to get it in here so we're going to take one of our buckles and we're going to cut it off of my um, it's sheet here, it's sheet of buckles. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim down the edges of it. Um, they do, when you do cut it off, there's like little sharp pieces on it that you want to get off. Now I know people use like nail files to get it off. I am very squeamish when it comes to nail files and I cannot use them. So I um I just take the tweezers and get as close as I can to get the whole thing off. Okay, so then we got our buckle, we've got the ribbon. So basically you just want to put the buckle in one side and then you're gonna put it back so it's in it's in the one side, and then you're going to put it through the other side. Okay, and then you're just going to take and pull the ribbon until you think you've got it where you want it to be. So next step is back to your pony. You're gonna measure it again on your pony to make sure that you got it cut correctly. Yep, and it looks like I have it in a pretty good spot. So I'm probably gonna leave it where I have it because it's like right, I have it right by his ear and that's where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove and then again we are just going to we're going to trim down our ribbon and then we are going to go ahead and glue it down okay and i find that with the glue gun like the mini glue gun and mini glue sticks uh actually work the best for this kind of project because of course you're dealing with ribbon and you're dealing with um little pieces of metal as well so there we go now we have a buckle on our halter so kind of turn it this way so you can see it a little better all right next step is the chi the throat piece so the throat latch so with this i just go ahead and stick my ribbon through just go ahead and Stick it on in there and then trim it down and then throw some glue on there all right and make sure that holds and your hot glue is actually going to dry fairly quick um just a note so that way if you make a mistake or you don't have things where they want it to you don't want it to be or if you just want to quickly make a halter um your hot glue is going to dry the quickest and it's going to be the best. I've in the past <laughs> making these, I tried to use super glue, not a good idea. I tried to use Elmer's glue, not a good idea. Hot glue, perfect. And I know other people use different things and that's totally fine, but I for one am a hot glue girl. Like I have to use that. Okay. So now that we have the buckle, what we're doing is we are placing our chin strap. So I'm just measuring it under. And I'm just going to, let's see if I can get my pony here in a good, I'm just going to measure it up to where I want it. Again, we're going to trim, trim it, make it a little, um, make it, in a, put it in a good spot as to where we want it. Okay. So then after I cut it, I make sure that I did get it the actual length that I wanted it. So I'm going to put it back on my pony 
just to make sure that the length of the cheek piece is exactly where I want it because if not, I will have to go back through and again, I will need to redo some of this, which, you know, with this being a video, it is already like 22 minutes long. Um, so it's a little longer than I had planned, but this is my first time doing a halter on the video. So that is why it's taking a little longer, a little longer than it normally probably should take me to do this. <laughs> okay. So now we have this part, this part of the halter, so those are throat, our throat latch, our cheek pieces, and our nose band. All right, so again, put on, measure, and just a thing to note, like, you know, if you do something and it's wrong, it can always be fixed. You always have the option to fix it, even if it takes you longer than you planned. I know there are many times or there were back when I started making these when I was fix 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 like I kept I kept screwing everything up and I kept having to go back and fix it so you know it's not for me it didn't come out perfect the first time and you know I don't expect that it would unless you're just really really good at making these the first time and you know of course at, at that point it's going to be like super good so all right so now what we're going to do is we have to put the piece that connects on the underside of the halter. I actually don't think I know what that's called, but the way I do it is I use an O-ring and then I use a D-ring. So we're going to snip the D-ring off of its sheet because those come on sheets as well. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim that little bit of sharp edge off because like I said before, I am not one to use a nail file because I am super, super duper squeamish about that. Okay. So then what I do is you got your two pieces, go ahead and hook them together. And then you want to actually go ahead and hook it to the halter as well. So you're going to hook it to your nose piece here. Okay. So there's that. Um, that, as you can see, sorry. And then you're just going to squeeze your O-ring together. Okay. So that piece is now assembled onto your halter. Okay. So you have the O-ring and then you have the D-ring. So then my D-ring, I'm going to go ahead and put the ribbon through. So we're going to go ahead and do that. If I can get it in there, that would be fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to have to trim the ribbon to an angle because see, with it being flat like that, it is not going to willingly go through my D-ring here. And it's like, it's just like the other pieces we had to do that for. So, all right, D-ring, ribbon, just going to pop it on in there. Okay, this is not, this is working against me tonight. So you're just going to have to bear with me. Okay, there we go. We got it through. So <laughs> there we go. You just pop that on through there. So see, it's through your D-ring now. I used the flat end of the D-ring to pull the ribbon across because I don't want it being on my curved end because the curved end goes where my O-ring is. All right, so we're going to go ahead and lay down the glue on that one too. All right. So now we have that, that piece. Okay. So then all we have to do next is just bring the throat latch piece like under. It kind of got unfolded or a little wide there. So we're just gonna, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the ribbon and we're going to bring it around the throat piece there. And we're gonna trim it and we're gonna glue it down. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and lay down the glue on that one. Okay, so see, we're just gonna glue that right there. All right, and then I keep pulling like strands of glue off of my halter because there's so much, so much glue. Okay, all right, so there is your halter basically assembled. 
So we're going to go ahead and pop it on the pony. Make sure it is the length we want all the way around. Throat piece, uh, underneath piece. And then if it is, the last thing we do is have to put on the strap to hold the halter on. So like the buckle, the, the main part, main part of the buckle. I'm actually gonna take, and I'm gonna shorten this piece a little bit because if it gets too long, it's not gonna fit on there right. And I got it a little bit longer than I wanted to. So I'm actually going to just go ahead, refold, trim, and re-glue. See what I mean? There's just times when you just have to, just have to play around and make sure things are where they want, where they, where you want them to be before you can continue on to the last step. So the last step is now um, just making the buckle piece, which is really easy. All right, so I got that. And I always try to make sure like this piece is under here is pulled tight because if not, like it's going to be loose and your rings are just going to kind of lay around. They're not going to look nice. They're not going to be like real. Not, um, they're not going to look like they're supposed to. Let's put it that way. Okay, so. Go ahead, remeasure, make sure. Yeah, that's better. So I had it a little bit longer than I wanted before and it wasn't fitting right the way I wanted it to. So now that it is, I can finish it up. All right. Okay, so that's done. That's done. All right. So I'm just like double checking, pulling off excess like glue gun strings because as you know, with a glue gun, it does get pretty stringy. So I just want to make sure that I don't have like strings all over my pony, which my pony actually does have one on his nose. So we're going to help him out and clean it off. <laughs> all right. Okay. And then, so for the buckle piece, we are just going to row that in there, put the ribbon through the O-ring, the O-ring that is up on the cheek piece. You're just going to trim. And you're going to glue it down. Okay. All right. And then, so the final step of this process, we're done with the glue gun, unless you just need to make some corrections, is we're going to put it on our pony. On our pony. <laughs> so, just like that. And then we're going to take, and we're going to bring this, ribbon around and again I go extra long because I want to make sure that I have plenty of ribbon to work with should something go awry when putting the ribbon through the buckle so then all we have to do is buckle him up and he's got a Halloween halter so I'm just gonna... okay I don't know why my ribbon is all like bent and out of shape here there we go. Okay. All right. And as I'm doing the buckle, I'm just making sure too that everything is fitting the way I want it to. And he's got like so many strings on him. Okay. So then the next step is to just take and you're just going to pull it up and you are going to stick the ribbon through like that. Okay, so I got the ribbon through the buckle. So then what I normally do is I use the tweezers to finish pulling it in because this one does get a little tricky because it does like the string sometimes when you're working with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick it through. All right. Oh, okay, that didn't sound good. Okay, no scratches though, we're good. Okay, <laughs> I would have to check for scratches because I'm like, oh no, I might have scratched my pony. Okay. So then we're just going to finish pulling. I'm going to actually turn him towards me so I can see what I'm doing because otherwise I will not get this correct. So. Okay. So it's on. So voila, and then the last thing we have to do, all we have to do is just trim the ribbon to about where we want it. Okay. 
and voila, we have a holiday, an, an orange holiday halter for a spooky pony. This video is not doing it any justice. I will say that right now. It looks way better in person than it does on the video, but there you go. A Halloween halter. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. Um, I know it was just something fun for Halloween that we did. You got to see my collection. You got to see an unboxing. You got to help me put the collection on the shelf. You got to help me build a halter. So um, I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. Um, I do, I would like to make more tack making videos in the future. Um, but it just like, it took, it took me like 30 some minutes to do this one. So we'll see. But yeah, there we go. So I hope you guys have a great Halloween and a great weekend. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.